One common problem that often affects a dog's nervous system is called meningoencephalomyelitis. This term means inflammation of the brain, spinal cord, and the protective layers around them. Depending on which part is inflamed, we use different terms. Encephalitis means inflammation of the brain. Meningitis means inflammation of the coverings of the brain and spinal cord. And myelitis means inflammation of the spinal cord itself. Today I'm going to use encephalitis to refer to all of them just to keep things simple, but the same ideas apply to both meningitis and myelitis. There are two main reasons that this abnormal inflammation can happen. The first is infections. Infections can be caused by bacteria, virus, fungi, or other organisms. And the second is autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease happens when the body's immune system or the defenses mistakenly start attacking the body itself. In dogs, autoimmune diseases as the cause of meningitis and encephalitis is much more common. Normally what happens, the immune system is able to tell the difference of what is self or, or what's the body and what's not part of the body or foreign, what we call non-self. When there's autoimmune disease, what happens is the immune system loses this ability to distinguish self from non-self and starts attacking itself. So you may have heard of things like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. These are autoimmune conditions that we see in people and animals where the immune system attacks the internal organs or the joints. In dogs, meningitis and encephalitis is caused by autoimmune disease in which the body attacks the brain, the spinal cord, or the protective coverings of the brain and spinal cord. We don't fully understand why the immune system behaves this way and loses this ability to tell self from non-self. Um, it's likely due to a mix of factors, including genetic factors and uh, certain environmental factors. For example, sometimes we see a dog start with symptoms after having a recent infection or a recent vaccination, something that triggers the immune system to be stimulated but why certain dogs have a stimulated immune system that then goes back to normal and other dogs the immune system gets stimulated and starts attacking itself, that remains unclear. Symptoms of meningitis, encephalitis, and myelitis can vary based on what part of the nervous system is affected. When the front of the brain is affected, Pets may experience things like seizures or walking in circles, confusion, acting blind, etc. And when the back part of the brain is affected, we see different symptoms. Uh, pets may be off balance. They might have a head tilt or abnormal eye movements. They might be weak in their limbs. They might have droopiness on one side of the face. Or they might be confused or really, really sleepy. If the spinal cord is affected, Symptoms may vary from being just painful, they might walk but are really incoordinated, and sometimes dogs even lose the ability to walk or move the limbs at all. If multiple areas of the nervous system are affected, you might see a combination of these symptoms. Encephalitis, meningitis, and myelitis are much less common in cats. We classically see it in young, adult, small breed dogs, such as Yorkies, Chihuahuas, Terriers, Pugs, French Bulldogs. Several other conditions can mimic the symptoms of meningitis and encephalitis, so an accurate diagnosis is crucial. There's no simple blood test for these conditions, and dogs don't always have a fever or aren't always acting sick. So we rely on things like medical history and examination and tests. So the medical history and symptoms, that really helps us narrow down, is it a neurological problem, where in the nervous system is the problem, and helps us come up with a list of possible causes. The neurological examination also helps us do that and say where in the nervous system is the problem. Based off of that, we can say, 
well, where is the problem? And that's where we do the MRI. So the MRI might be of the head or might be of the spinal cord of the neck or might be of the spinal cord of the back, depending on what the symptoms are. And what we're looking for on that MRI is evidence of inflammation or evidence of other causes such as tumors or strokes, etc. Usually after the MRI, we're performing a spinal fluid analysis. So the spinal fluid analysis looks at the CSF, looks at the fluid that bathes the brain and the spinal cord and helps us say, is there inflammation? What type of inflammation? And gives us an idea of the severity of that inflammation. Sometimes after the MRI and spinal tap, we also perform tests for certain infections, and that can be via blood tests or spinal fluid. Most cases are treated by suppressing the overactive immune system with medications. And the cornerstone or the main treatment that we use is corticosteroids. We use corticosteroids such as prednisone to reduce the inflammation and suppress the overactive immune system. Unfortunately, steroids have some side effects. Dogs will usually drink more, therefore they'll urinate more, their appetite will increase, and they'll pant. But long term with high doses, dogs also will start to gain weight, lose muscle, lose hair, and sometimes they'll develop things like diabetes. We accept some of these negative effects for all of the positive benefits of the prednisone. We usually start at a high dose of prednisone and aim to slowly decrease the dose over time, trying to find the dose the lowest dose that we can find that still controls the signs. However, most pets need a second immunosuppressive medication. By combining medications, by using multiple medications, we can use lower doses of each, thereby limiting the side effects of each medication, and we typically have a better long-term outcome than using one medication alone. About 40% of dogs respond well to treatment and lead a happy, healthy life. Some respond well initially, but over the first six to eight months as we decrease medications, symptoms come back and we need to adjust the medications. Unfortunately, about 20% of pets don't respond at all to treatment and can actually die of, of this condition. Since this condition can be serious and recurring, Treatment is usually lifelong. Our goal is to give your pet the longest, healthiest life while limiting side effects. It's really important that we stay involved in your pet's long-term care. If your pet shows any signs of neurological issues like seizures, changes in behavior, difficulty walking, or unexplained pain, you should see a veterinary neurologist as soon as possible. Early diagnosis and treatment are crucial for the best outcomes. Thank you.